present good morning to one and all and those of you who have tuned in uh, this morning, our first worship service for 2021. We're happy that you joined us and uh, we will ask Brother Father to lead us off in a song, There is Power in the Blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lord. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of God. Will oh, you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood, love for a place. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lord. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of God. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Will you live daily in its praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lord. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks that we can be here once again to just to worship you and to praise you, Father. Lord, you are such a mighty and awesome, powerful. There is nothing limitless about you, Father. And so we just want to give you thanks that you are that God who serve us and who love us and care for us and don't treat us. When sometimes we are not ready to be treated right, but who you are and because of how you loved us, we appreciate it and we come to you with thanksgiving and we come to you with praise. Father, I want to thank for you, Father, for the sins that we have um, done intentionally and for those that we might not even be aware of. Father, show us those sins that we have in our lives and please forgive us for whatever we have done that is wrong against you. Sometimes you want to justify or sing God, but when we come before you, we know that you are a holy God. And so we just want to give you thanks that we have the opportunity through your son, Jesus Christ, that we can be forgiven, Lord God. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Colossians 3, verses 1. One to ten. Since then, you have raised to Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right of things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Karen, the reading. Okay, and we ask God to add his blessings to the reading of his word. If you remember when you were doing your Christmas cleaning, you went to the house, there are some things that you look at that you said, I have to retain these things. 
I can't throw them out. And then there are some things that you said, I have to release, they gotta go. And then there are some things that you look at it and you say, I remember. And so that's the stage I'm setting this morning as we come to this service. 2021, a lot of question is about what this year will bring uh, for us. Um, it is a challenge to live the Christian life. And as we enter this new year, the challenge is for us to renew that challenge of serving the Lord. And so today is a good day for us to take an inventory of our lives, our walk with the Lord, the relationship with him, and the kind of sacrifice that we put out uh, for the Lord. For us, we look at COVID-19, uh, or as you look at 2020, all of our spiritual lives have been challenged and some no doubt have fall, had fallen away. Some are struggling to keep it together while others are enjoying the goodness of God. Each day we're able to see the Lord is there with us. And so that propel us and encourage us to go on. And to you I say, praise God um, that you have not allowed. Because truthfully, COVID-19 was not the, the first challenge we have as a Christian. Each day, <laughs> each day there is a challenge. And so uh, three points I want to make um, from this passage of scripture. And the first thing are those things that we must retain. All right, when you were cleaning your homes, <laughs> you said one thing that will not go is this building. We have to keep this building, this will not go. And therefore, as we do likewise today, uh, taking an inventory of ourselves, we must be aware of our foundation. Our foundation, and uh, Paul said today, if we have been risen, with Christ. And that if is not a statement of possibility, but that's all that, that was a declaration of spiritual reality. If you are a child of God, there is no if answer, but you have been risen with Christ. That is the foundation of our spiritual life. With all that we do, we cannot get rid of that foundation, because first of all, God has given it to us. And so uh, it is as we um, stay focused and aware of that foundation that we are able to draw from God uh, the power uh, that we need to go on into this life that will override and overcome all the forces of evil. And so uh, number one is that we stay aware of that foundation. And then we attend, pay attention to our focus. Uh, Paul made a point right here in this passage of scripture and throughout the whole book of uh, Colossians, that now that we are in Christ, what is our focus? Our focus is not this world. We are only passing through. Let us not be sidetracked and let us not allow the world to so overshadow us. That Jesus said, you see, if you, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. So what is our focus as we uh, enter this new year and as we continue to serve him? A deeper knowledge of Jesus Christ. That would always help us <coughs> as we make our way through. I remember when the Lord said to Peter, cast your net on the other side. Uh, and, and, and Peter said, but we did that all night. But Peter said, at your bidding, and when he recognized what was happening and how the Lord had blessed him, he said, depart from me, for I am a wretched man. That when we come closer to Jesus and we gain a better knowledge of him, 
we have got to see ourselves as nothing in his sight. We must also seek to maintain a clean and holy life unto God. Jesus Christ is our example. And so we follow uh, the example that he, that he leads. So he said that, um, that we are to be holy as he who have called us is holy. And so that is our focus to become more and more um, Christ-like in our personal lives and in the life that we share with others in the world today and all around us. And that we must um, focus on an effective prayer life. We are dealing with prayer all this week and uh, would say to you, and you, did, you know it well, that the prayer of a righteous man, the scripture says, <coughs> availed much. And, and, and that prayer life is where we communicate with Jesus and we draw from him that we are able to continue in the walk with him. And then when we think of the, uh, the, the fruit of the spirit, allowing those fruits to bear witness within us as we go and share uh, the word of God. He has given us that mandate that we share the word of God with others. So when we do our inventory um, today and beyond, let's focus on the foundation and let's work on keeping those things. Those things, they must stay with us regardless of how difficulties, difficulty the circumstances uh, that we might find ourselves in. And so, yes, the foundation must stay with us. But then there are some things that we must release. There are those things that is in our lives that oftentimes cause us uh, shame, oftentimes cause us to come back to the altar because they keep on showing up. But as we take that inventory today, uh, let us bend and releasing uh, those things. Number one, I speak of, of Paul's doctrine. There are so many um, doctrine going around us um, today. And uh, even in the scripture where it was one time, I'm thinking now right now of the circumcision, while that was something that came out of the Old Testament, when we came to the New Testament, that is no longer necessary because Jesus Christ had fulfilled that. But as these early believers um, served God, oftentimes they came in contact with that. And so when presented, uh, one might say, well, yeah, that's what God um, said we must do. But when we get into it, we notice that that era have passed over and the, earth, the only circumcision that is necessary now is that of the heart. And so if you are exposed, and I just use that as a sample right now, I am sure there are many other doctrine that is out there that comes from various uh, philosophers that they draw and um, <laughs> that they draw from, and they would say that this is Bible, this is good. And I heard something over the Christmas um, that that's clearly uh, of the same nature. You and I need to um, be conscious of these uh, false teachings when they come. And when they come, look at it closely through the lens of the word of God. And uh, once the word, the spirit of God would have convinced us that that is not of God, then we need to walk away from it and not just hold on to it because this was something that uh, men of all uh, were believing in and was holding on to. No, no, we must stand. And again, the Apostle Paul says that we must stand and sound doctrine, go to the word of God and do a study of what it is and then walk away from there that we must not uh, hold on to those things. And then secondly, is that we must rid ourselves of foolish demands. 
all right? The world around us brings on a lot of um, demands on us. Again, as I said earlier, they are not for the spiritual life. We can get rid of them. And therefore, <coughs> uh, Paul challenged us to do just that. Uh, when we think of the fleshly deeds uh, that, that comes to us, oftentimes, and Paul lists a number of them, he talks about the sexual sin um, that across the board, uh, fornication, adultery, uh, we have the homosexual, we have the lesbian, on all kinds of uh, sexual uh, deeds that comes to us. And it is so interesting that the world that we're living in, we find words um, to use so that these sins become comfortable you know, for us. And so you and I, knowing the word of God and, and following the spirit of God, where God were to say to us that we must rid ourselves of those things, then we must walk away from those things because all of those things there seeks to, well, they come from the world and they seek to hinder us and to destroy us. He talks about un uncleanness and uncleanliness, all right, those impure thoughts. Um, that we have, and they list a number of them, covetousness and anger and wrath and malice, blasphemy, all of those things there. And when you stop to look at those things, you see them, they are not from the Lord. In fact, the Lord says to us to get rid of them. But you see the world bring it into us and depend on where we are uh, at that moment, we find ourselves get an ease by easing into these things, only to find out that they then trap us and smear us that we cannot go on for the Lord. Paul says um, those things must go. And, 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 and you and I are doing the inventory today. So we are free under the Spirit of God to ask him and to, to, to point out to us, and when he do, that we must be ready to get uh, rid of those things because we're looking at the new year and we're looking at the way forward where we can praise the Lord uh, to the highest. And then the last thing he says, uh, some things that we must retain. So <laughs> things that we must retain. I laugh just now because when we were doing the cleaning, we went to the China closet. Oh my goodness, there's some things in our China closet that every time I see it, I remember, I remember, and therefore those things, uh, they are good things, they would not go, in fact, um, the children and the grandchildren don't decide it, but they sort of split it up and so. But coming back to the point, there is a debt have taken place. When you have given your life to Christ, you became dead to sin. And because you are dead to sin, then it means that sin does not, uh, no longer have that influence over your life. The world does not have that. Now the world will keep on pushing in on us because that is Satan's uh, as a plan and his way to get us back from him. But one of the things that would help us is that that verse in, in, in Galatians 2.20 where Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. The more you and I can think on that and reflect that each day, it would help us when Satan and the world barge in on us because we are dead because of our faith in Jesus Christ. There has been a deposit that we've made. We are dead to sin. And we decided now that we would give the Lord Jesus Christ my life. My life is in Christ. And that's what the Apostle Paul says. And when that happens, the Spirit of God imputed in me that divine nature. That divine nature helped me to look at sin with disdain. And even though I get carried away, even though I find myself healing into temptation, oftentimes I don't stay there because what is overpowering is that divine nature that is there. And so God gives us that opportunity to come to him and um, 
redeem ourselves or restore ourselves unto him. And then there, there is that dream that comes as a result of this when we think of the future. Yes, the battle is raging. It come, the battle comes from the world, it comes from the flesh, it comes from devil, it comes from Satan and all of that. But in the midst of all of this, because my life is in Christ, I have a future that I'm looking forward to. And that future is all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And because it is there in Christ, I am able to look through and the difficulties that we face with that exciting hope that this is this will all come to an end and there is something um, better ahead for me. And therefore, my life in Christ is that um, I am with him. And the scripture says that when he uh, returned, I would reveal and uh, be revealed with him. And so this morning, uh, brothers and sisters, as we sit at the Lord's table, and as we take an inventory of our lives, we don't need to worry about what 2021 will bring. We need to worry about what God will do with us in 2021. And one of the things that would help is that, is that I simply surrender to him. And I say, Lord, here is my life. What is it that you want me to do in 2021? Coming to the Lord's table is always a wonderful uh, time to remember uh, these things and to reflect on these things and to make conscious decision to walk away uh, uh, of those things that is not going to help our, our spiritual life. But it's also a good time to retain what we have in Christ. The Apostle Peter uh, said to uh, in First Peter chapter one and verse eighteen, he says, "For you know that it was not with perishable things like silver and gold that we were redeemed, but I want you to hear this, and you know it full well." It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these days. In other words, what do we have to remember? What do we have to retain? My faith in Jesus Christ is not a washover. It's not of this world. It is anchored in the blood of Jesus Christ uh, that he shed for me. And it is not only for me, but it's for all those who believe in him. That is the privilege that we have. And understand, this is not something that just happened. Look at it, he says, from before the foundation of the earth, God have decided that this will be so. It's not something wonderful for us to, to hold on to and to build on as we continue to serve him. The point I'm making this morning is that it, it depends on how we hold on to the foundation that would determine uh, um, how, whether we're going to be rocked uh, by the world around us. And so as we come to the table, reminding us of that, that God had raised him from the dead and praise God uh, for that. Now Paul tells us in another place that whenever we come to the point of, when we come to the table, that we must examine ourselves to make certain that it is with the right motive. Because as I said earlier, this is a powerful fellowship, it's a powerful table, and it's a time for us to reunite, reconnect, renew all that we have, so that God himself would give us the power that we need as we go forward. And so this time, I would like for us to um, pause and give ourselves a time to do a little inventory of ourselves to make certain that my life is telling for God and it's all acceptable to him. And if it is not, God is good. He gives us uh, that um, wonderful opportunity. He says that if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. That is God's intention that as we go forward into 
this new year. And so let us pause for a moment of reflection as well as doing that inventory there in our lives. We thank you, God, for your forgiving power. We thank you for your love and your mercy, that even while we go unfaithful, you remain faithful. And because of your mercy and your love, <clears throat> your grace, you extend to us that we are able to um, clean up our lives and continue to walk with you. Thank you for that. And we ask that you will bless us. We're going to ask Brother Krong at this time to give thanks for the bread. Yes, brother. Dear Father, we thanks once again that we could be here, Father, to share in this time. Father, we give you thanks for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace. And most of all, Father, we give you for um, thanks for Jesus Christ, who came into this world and died for us on the cross. We also give thanks, Father, for all the good things that you have done for us. By his stripes, we are healed. So, Father, we ask your blessing upon this bread as we share in this time. He says in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Brother. The Apostle Paul says, For that which I receive, I pass unto you. That the night they betrayed Jesus, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, uh, which was broken for you. Take and eat, do it in remembrance of me. Shall we eat? I'm going to ask Brother Father to give thanks for the cup. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you that we can worship you. We can praise you because you are worthy. You're an awesome God. You're a marvelous God. You're a wonderful God. You're the mighty God. You love us, you created us, Lord, and you reign sovereignly over us. And God, you provide a way for us to come back into fellowship with you. And that way is through the blood of Christ. He has offered himself in obedience to you as a sacrifice, the precious Lamb of God, to redeem man once and for all. And with your stripes, God, we are healed. So this one, as we partake of this cup, as we drink of this wine, may our hearts be thrilled with excitement and be refreshed with our love for you, Father God, as we drink remembering the sacrifice that Christ has made in offering his life for the redemption of our sins. We thank you, God, that we can partake and that we can refresh and renew our commitment to you. And we ask God that you will Fill our hearts and that you will so continue to help us to be invigorated for you, Father God, that we will continue to put you first in everything we do. So as we drink of this cup, we ask that you will bless it. Bless our bodies, Father God, bless our minds, and help us, Lord, to continue to have a renewed fellowship with you day by day as we serve you, as we walk with you. So we give you thanks for this cup, and we thank you, Lord, for, we, for the time that we can remember the sacrifice of Christ offering his life for us and the blood God that brings healing into our lives. So we claim this now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
shall we drink? Jesus, you triumph by your blood. You bought our peace. Where there once was threatened separation, your healing river flows. Let the 